Glamour Profession is a television show designed to inform our viewers about the ins and outs of a profession considered to be glamorous. Glamour Profession informs you, our viewers, with on-set location interviews to bring you up close and personal to the entertainment industry. Hello, I'm Emily Erdelin, and I'm excited to bring you this episode of Glamour Profession, a show designed to give you an inside tour of some of your favorite glamour professions. Whether it's auditioning tips to help you break the industry, or an up-close look at one celebrity's way of giving back, this episode will bring you one step closer to understanding one of the many faces of the entertainment industry. Regardless of what you need, we're here to give it to you. So sit back and watch as we dazzle you with this episode of Glamour Profession. Ebony Ishea Holyfield is not only an actress, but an activist using her me movement to bring fine arts back into Atlanta inner city schools. Ebony was kind enough to invite Glamour Profession for an all-exclusive interview at the Holyfield Estate. Ebony, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing absolutely fabulous. How are you? I'm great. So, Ebony, with the last name Holyfield, I imagine it might be hard for you sometimes to escape that reputation. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, coming up in the household with the name Holyfield, sometimes it is difficult because people uh, just put you in this box as far as being like someone into sports and things like that. However, I am an artist, so first and foremost, acting is my passion, as well as the Me Movement, which is my nonprofit organization that I founded in 2009. Well, that's great to hear. I love to hear about individuality, so let's focus on that. And first, I want to hear about your artist side before we get into the Me Movement. I've always loved the art and I figured out around the age of 12 that I wanted to be an actress however my father was always like you have to run track I kept running track and just hated it and then um, I got accepted into a drama club at my school that happened to be during the day so it, it didn't interfere with the track schedule so I got to do that and my teacher was like well you have to audition for this play and I was like well I have to run track too he was like well you get it for a grade so I auditioned for the main role and I actually got it and so I had to write my dad a letter and I'm like daddy I have something to ask you so I gave him this letter and he never he didn't talk to me for like two days about it and then he came to me and said that I could do it so that's where my acting came from from my first play in high school and ever since then it's been history and I majored in theater in college so it's always been my passion ever since then. Do you think that you ever had any self-defining moments in college at Spelman? I just used it as a platform to learn and to be able to grow as an artist because I didn't have as much time as a lot of other people that started in middle school or elementary school. Our viewers should probably know that you have how many brothers and sisters? I have 12. And I just had a baby brother that was born on February the 14th, which is Valentine's Day, so that was a wonderful present. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your role in the family? I'm the third eldest of 12, so I am the big sister a lot of times, so I definitely have a nurturing spirit, but um, a lot of what I've put into the Me Movement stems from me working as an after-school teacher at Burgess Peterson Academy, and I just saw a lot of kids that didn't know how to respect themselves. Did, well, first of all, they didn't know how to respect other people, and I noticed that they couldn't respect other people because they didn't respect themselves. That's where a lot of the Me Movement came from, from my experience as an after-school teacher as well as an individual that was just absolutely in love with the arts. So why don't you tell us about the dynamics and the focus of your movement? Well, my focus is definitely youth. And so what we do is put programming into the school system to build up kids' self-esteem and to promote a healthy lifestyle, but we always incorporate some form of the arts because it's important. And a lot of people don't understand the power of the arts, but children need that just as much as they need an English class or a foreign language class, all of those things. So that's my way of bringing the arts into the school system, but also to give something to the children to let them believe in themselves and let them know that they are worth something and that the world is waiting on their change. A lot of kids come to me after the program and say, Miss Holyfield, well, I absolutely love the Me Movement. Thank you so much for creating it. And that just touches my heart because this was just like my little baby. And I wasn't for sure if the kids would 
uh, go towards it or if they would be like oh no 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 this is not something that I think is cool or what have you so for them to come to me afterwards and say that this is needed and I appreciate it that means the world to me so I understand that tomorrow, which we will be focusing on, we are going to be attending your event for the Me Movement. So tell us about that. Well, the event tomorrow is called Soulful Expressions, which is a monthly fundraiser for Me Movement. As many may know, it takes a lot of funds to be able to run a nonprofit, and especially when you're first starting off, a lot of the um, the federal people would like to know, like to see your track record first. So it's not an easy thing just to get a grant when you're first starting off. And so this was our way of trying to do that and trying to create a platform for aspiring artists because there's just so many people out there that are unknown because they don't have the money or they may not have the right manager, but they are talented. And so we're trying to create a platform so that their music or their artistic work can be exposed to the world. So we're doing that as well as trying to raise funds to put our programming into the school system. You know, I like, I, you know, I like her as a person, but she's not what we want. What's that? What's that? Mm, no. But if you could be the actress in any movie, what would it be? Are you a starving artist or maybe a striving actor? Well, if you've ever wanted to be a part of the acting scene, you aren't going to want to miss this. How do you get past a casting call and actually land the part? Whether you want to dazzle them on stage or sizzle on the big screen, you'll want to be sure to take note of these simple tips. How many times have you gone on a reading and just knew you got the part, but never heard from them again? Or maybe you were just what the directors were looking for and knew you rocked it, but they never called you back. Well, you are not alone, and the GLAM team is here with some hot tips to help you to be successful if you have been bitten by the acting bug. Definitely always do your research. Always make sure you have accurate and current information about the show or part you're auditioning for because nothing is more embarrassing than getting the title of the actual show wrong or mispronouncing the executive producer's name. Join us as we take a look into this week's edition of Glamour Professional, won't you? On this week of Glamour Edition, I'm sorry, Glamour Profession. Welcome to this week's edition of Glamour what is the name of the show again? Sorry. That's a glamour profession. You know, I've been out there so long studying that now I've lost my thing. Okay. So. Well, today on this edition of the Glamour Magazine, we're going to take a sneak peek. Hello, my name is Larry, and welcome to this week's... Uh... And I would like you to welcome to this week's edition of the professional, uh, Glamour Professional. Don't be nervous. Just stay calm and realize everybody auditioning is in the same boat. Take a deep breath, relax, and speak clearly and confidently. What does it take to cut a single? On this... Yes, that's okay. Do, so, do me a favor. Yeah, just worry. This is okay. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Okay. Take another deep breath. Okay. Now, start over and just relax. Hello, I'm Eleanor Johnston, and welcome to this edition of Professional Glamour. Have you ever wondered what it would be like inside of a, inside of the, um, inside of, okay, how about this? You've I, read the script, right? Yes. You yes, know what it says about. You yes, have it in your head, what you think it says. So don't look at it. You just talk. Just talk and just sum summarize. Oh. It doesn't have to be word for okay. word. doesn't even have to be close. You just talk and introduce the show and just t welcome people, introduce yourself, and just talk for just one minute. Right, take the piece of paper and put it on the chair. Okay. It's, it's okay to improvise. Yes, don't, improvise. Don't be afraid to improvise. Right. Of, you know, don't be afraid of improvision. Look really original, so, you know, just, just bring your originality to the script, okay? Okay. Right. Hi, my name is Eleanor Johnston, and welcome to this week's edition of The Professional Glamour. Have you ever wondered what it is like inside of the music professional and pro profession? Well, I'm going to tell you about it. It is, oh, I That's don't know okay. why. Just, okay, so now just, um, just talk about, I don't know, what, what do you think it would be like to be? It is, okay, sorry. It is fast paced. You have to be on top of everything. 
So that's it for this week's of Glamour Profession. Good. Thank you very much. Be real. Directors and producers can spot a phony a mile away. Okay, maybe two miles. But they definitely do not like them. I like to sing, but today I didn't. I'm going to choose not to sing today, but uh, I'm just going to try it for acting and um, okay, hosting. That's fine. And I sing as well, so if you want, I can oh, sing in French. Oh, sing us a song in okay. French. Because actually, um, some people like my voice, and we're going a mix of French song and English, and I would be one of the singers. Okay, just okay. 30 seconds French. Go ahead, song. Les gens m'appellent l'idole des jeunes, il y en a même qui m'envient, mais pourtant les gens ne savent pas que de la, dans la vie je m'ennuie. So, Sebastian, I cannot understand a word he says. It's like, you know, why would I continue to watch if I don't understand what you're saying? Yeah, it was too, <laughs> too, too, too much. Yeah. Don't over or underdress for the role. Be familiar enough with the script to know what is appropriate. Directors generally do not like busy prints or loud colors, unless the role specifically requires it. Shine bright. Have energy. Don't leave home without it. One thing that is always a must at any audition is energy. After all, if you can't hold the director's attention, how do you expect to captivate an entire audience? This is the first way. Hello. I'm Stephanie Northrup, and I want to welcome you to this week's edition of Glamour Profession. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be part of the exciting music industry? Have you ever wondered what the inside of a recording studio actually looks like and what it takes to cut a rockin' single? Well, on this edition of Glamour Profession, we're going to take a sneak peek inside the world of creating music. So first, let's head into the recording studio. Join us as we take a look into this exciting Glamour profession. Yeah, singing so is my thing. You did such a great job at hosting, so show us singing. Show us singing? Oh, I can sing. Okay. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wrench like me. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. I want to feel the heat with somebody. I walked a mile in your shoes, but that's as far as I'll go because your path ends with can't, shouldn't, won't, and why, and mine begins with could, should, will, and why not. I can't be broken when. Oh, yeah, yeah, at last, the sky's above. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very, very much, good. guys. And finally, don't be afraid. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was Brad Pitt. Auditioning is a learning process, and the more auditions you go on, the better you will become. What has brought you to this point in your career to come in and, and audition for this host? Like, what, what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What has brought you here? Well, I love acting in general. Um, I go on auditions, just a lot of auditions, just to see, just to get experience, just to gain experience. I don't. Um, it's just to just to get an experience, just to see what's out there in the industry, to see what I might get. I don't know who who's looking for what, and and um, I might get something that I never like. You don't know until you try out. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Here. So that was Eleanor. So what do you guys think about Eleanor? She's a really nice person. Um, but I don't think that she belongs in media. I just don't think she's what we're looking for. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I admire what she's coming out to do. You know, I like, I, you know, I like her as a person, but she's not what we want. Most definitely, most definitely. Mm, no. <laughs> Next. So get out there and get that part. Don't be afraid to let your inner star shine through. The world and producers are waiting for you. Break a leg. Hi everyone, my name is Jacia Allen and I was a panelist on Glamour Perfection. I'm also a makeup artist and today we're going to be demonstrating on how to do makeup for auditions and callbacks. When you come in for an audition, you want to have a very natural authentic look that is sassy yet classy. 
The first thing a judge checks for is your skin, so you want to make sure your complexion looks flawless. The first thing you do is get a concealer that is one shade lighter than your complexion and opposes your skin type. For example, if you have oily skin, get a concealer that is more matte. Dry skin, a concealer that is liquid. The next thing you want to do is apply the foundation that opposes your complexion as with the concealer. If you are prone to oily skin, you can either use a foundation that is a cream to powder or use a separate powder. Just make sure the powder matches the shade of the foundation. The next thing you want to do is concentrate on the eyes. You don't want to overpower them or underdo them. Always choose a color that brings out your eyes. For example, green eyes are defined with light purples, plums, auburns, and of course black. Brown eyes look best in purple, black, and green. Blue eyes look good in purples, pinks, and peaches. When doing the cheeks and the lips, the only thing to remember is that they must match. Cool colors with cool colors and warm with warm. It also depends on your skin complexion. For darker tones, you want warm, deep colors. For lighter skin tones, fresher, cooler colors work best. Here is a complete look. For further information or questions, email jma at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching. As an actress, I know you obviously have dreams. So if you could be the actress in any movie, what would it be? As funny as it sounds, I would be an avatar too. I would love to be a blue person. <laughs> I absolutely love that movie. So I'm like, okay, the next time Mr. Cameron does another film, I would love to be in it. So if you're watching, James Cameron, call me. So have you ever worked with anyone within the meme movement that really stands out as far as names go that, you know, the viewers might be familiar with? Um, I've definitely worked with Jasmine Guy, who is an actress as well as a director here in Atlanta, but also worldwide, and also Lamont Rucker, which is an actor that uh, worked with Tyler Perry, and also the casting director from Tyler Perry Studios did a panel discussion with us as well. And we have a lot of other actors, prominent actors and actresses that have spoken on our panels. I would like to thank Glamour Profession just for the opportunity to be able to show me movement in a different light and the behind the scenes footage and what we're doing in the public eye as well. So thank you so much for coming out. So I, I really appreciate it. Emily and Sai here, attending the Me Movement at the Chocolate Bar of Atlanta. Ladies and gentlemen, Ebony Holyfield has done it again with a fabulous event that's gonna bring poetry, singing, live music, and it's just gonna be fabulous. I hope you guys stay tuned because we're gonna have lots of fun and interviews coming up. This event holds many unique qualities as we have everything from live performing artists to live body paint and that's something you will not see every day. I always like art, but art on a body. Have you ever witnessed that? Like we are having that live at the chocolate bar. How are you feeling? Great. Great. Great? It's nothing for you, huh? Yeah, a little chilly, that's it. Do you do this often? Uh, first time. First time! Oh my gosh. And you, my artist, what is your name? I'm Monique, um, owner of Skins Art, Body Art, and Face Painting. And we're creating some out of world armor, um, just freestyle here. And we do this often in the city. We go to events and we work with children, all mediums. We're your number one body art source in Atlanta. This is Sai with Glamour Profession. We are here with the singer, songwriter, and activist, Mr. Sam Collier. How are you doing tonight? I'm awesome. You look amazing. Can I just tell the camera? <laughs> She's amazing. Do you see it? Do you see that? Well, that's how we do it on Glamour Profession. We have to be glammed up. So the whole squad came in and, you know, did their thing. So thank you. I'm going to do one song called Falling Star. And it's a song I wrote. I'm 22 years old. It's the first song I ever wrote on the guitar. And it's, um, it's a shout out to all my ladies. And it's just talking about, uh, talking, talking to women in the right way. It was a cold rainy day When I first saw your face And all I could remember is The wind stopped oh, no, 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 no She took one look at me and my heart stopped going I heard great things about you, so tell me a little bit about your background in singing. Well, I've been singing um, my entire life. I started professionally, if you will. Um, just last year, it's been a full year. I've been recording with my group, Jay, um, and I've just been, you know, a full-time artist ever since. Well, I'm, I'm a student as well, but I've been pursuing artistry ever since. So tonight, what are you singing? 
I'm doing four covers. Um, no original uh, material because I didn't want to do it without my group members. But I'm doing a Jasmine Sullivan song. It's called I Need You Bad. I'm doing. I love that song. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I'm doing a Carrie Hilson song. It's called All the Boys. I'm doing uh, a Beyonce song called Smash Into You and John Legend. Um, save Room for My Love. Oh, wonderful. Well, we look forward to it. Hey. The Meave Movement not only has singers, he ha they have poets. And I'm standing here next to one of the poets that are going to be performing tonight. Mr. Dark Poet. Where'd you get that name, Mr. Dark Poet? Um, Self-explanatory. Dark skin, poetic words. Well, we love chocolate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are at the chocolate bar. Right, right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the poetry you're going to be doing tonight. One of them is just going to be some abstract stuff just jumbled together and the other one is uh, one of those thought-provoking type pieces. Existential linguistics surround my existence like electrons to a nucleus. I own the dubious distinction of being able to collect every aspect of dialect and eject it with the sleekest, slickest, sickest, wickedest flows decide of afros, cornrows, big nose, and a double dose of melanin in my skin. Each tale I spin changes courses. Of course, this reinforces my metamorphosis. Peace. We got singers, songwriters, poetry, and now we have spoken words. Miss uh, Marie, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Tell me about the pieces you're going to perform tonight. It's a bit of a Black History piece in honor of Black History Month. It's a piece about celebrating Black History Month 365 days a year. I sing for the forgotten. I write for the unheard. I stand up for the mistreated and try my best to tell the story of the untold. I dance for those who had to fight. And I dream for those who, because of fear, have a hard time sleeping at night. This is Cy, and I'm standing here with Mike Scott. Well. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing really, really well. Really so tell us about your performance tonight. Um, I'm just very excited. They're just real life, real life situations, real life pieces. And I like to write pieces and perform pieces that kind of give an inspirational message. Tomorrow is never promised. And today is a gift given only to those whose purpose has not yet been fulfilled. And son, your purpose is with him and he is in the word. So live every day as if your purpose was to give everything and love as if your life depended on it right because God said so and I did. Here with another great performer and I'm going to have her introduced because the name is quite unique so I love it. And what stage name do you go by honey? I am Senorita Awesome. So tell me about the performance that you um, have been doing all night. Um, well I sang and play acoustic guitar, I just did a couple of cover songs, a couple of original songs from my upcoming album March 27th, I've got to plug myself, um, <laughs> um, called I Sing, I Play, I Write and I'm really excited about it. Hi, I'm Ebony Shea Holyfield, and we're live at Selfful Expressions, and I just want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for showing up. This was absolutely a fantastic event. It was bigger than I expected, and I'm just so happy that it turned out so well. We had a lot of hardworking artists that participated in this event, and we had some people from the public come out to support. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching this edition of Glamour Profession. If you liked what you saw and want to take a step into Ebony's shoes as a guest on our show, contact us at glamprotv at gmail.com. Also, if you want your music to be featured or specific questions to be answered on the next episode, contact us at glamprotv at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>